All right, there's a free worksheet. I'll have a link to that in the description below if you want to work through these on your own, and then we're going to go through them together here in this video. I'm also going to be explaining how to decide what type of factoring technique you're going to want to use in each situation, and then we're going to factor completely, meaning sometimes we're going to have to factor further and further and further until it's completely factored. As we go through this video, the problems are going to get more challenging. Let's dive into the first problem. We've got 8x squared plus 6x. The first thing you want to do in this decision tree here is you want to ask yourself, is there a greatest common factor? That's the most important thing in factoring. You always want to do that first. Ask yourself, is there something I can divide out of all the terms? And remember, the terms are separated by plus or minus. When I look at this here, I can see that these, both of these terms you could divide out of 2. Okay, so they're divisible by 2. You could also divide out 1x. See how there's x squared? That's like x times x. Here we just have 1x. So the most we can divide out would be like a 2x. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that 2x in front of the parentheses. And you can see here if we divide, 8 divided by 2 is 4. x squared divided by x is just going to be 1x. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And here the x's cancel, so we're just left with 4x plus 3. The nice thing about factoring is you can always check your answer. You just take that 2x, distribute it back into the parentheses, and you're going to get back that original polynomial, and you've got it. Now with factoring, you always want to ask yourself, can I factor more? You know, could I take this 4x plus 3 and break it down further? Well, in this case, this is as far as we can go. So that's it. So number two, let's look at this one. We've got x squared minus x minus 12. How would you factor that one? Well, again, if we go to our decision tree, we see that we have three terms, okay? And you can see there's not a greatest common factor. We always want to check for that first. But we've got three terms, which means that, okay, we have to look. Is It's a trinomial. Is the leading coefficient here 1, or is it not 1. Well, in this case, you can see the leading coefficient is just 1. So we can jump right into the factoring. This is an easy way to do it. You just have to ask yourself, what two numbers multiply to negative 12, but they have to add to that middle coefficient, negative 1? Well, you can see that's going to be negative 4 and positive 3. They multiply to negative 12, but negative 4 plus 3 add to negative 1. You want to look to see if you can factor further, but in this case, that's as far as we can go, and you've got it. Let's go to number three. We've got 4x squared minus 25. Okay, first step, remember, you always want to check your greatest common factor. There's nothing we can divide out of both of these terms. Let's see, how many terms do we have? Do we have two, three, or four? We've got two terms, okay, because you can see, again, the terms are separated by plus or minus. And so that means if we have two terms, we want to check, is it a difference of two perfect squares? Or is it a sum of two cubes or a difference of two cubes? Well. When we look at this, we can see that 4x squared is a perfect square because 2x uh, times 2x. And we know that 25 is a perfect square. We know that's 5 times 5. And when we factor a difference of two squares, we have a sum and difference pattern. One you're adding, one you're subtracting. So this is 2x plus 5 and 2x minus 5. Notice the 10x and the negative 10x, they cancel. That's why we don't have a middle term. We just have like a first and a last term. So this one was a difference of two squares. Okay, again, remember there's a uh, link to a free worksheet with all of these 100 examples we're going to be going through. Go ahead and print that out and follow along or do them on your own and then check your answers again here. But number four, we've got 8x cubed minus 27. So first step, what do you think? Is there a greatest common factor? Well, it doesn't look like there is. Now, how many terms are there? Are there two, three, or four terms? There's two terms. We want to decide if it's a difference of two squares or a sum or difference of two cubes. Here, this is actually going to be a difference of two cubes. 8x cubed is really like uh, 2x times 2x times 2x, and 27 is really like 3 times 3 times 3. So you can see we have a difference of two cubes. In our formula here, a and b, a is going to be 2x, b is going to be 3. So we've got 2x minus 3. We've got 2x squared, which is 4x squared. We've got AB, which is going to be 6x, and we have B squared, which is a negative 3 times negative 3, which is positive 9. Now, one thing that students sometimes uh, utilize when they're doing the sum and difference of two cubes is this acronym SOAP, and it uh, stands for same, opposite, always positive, meaning that if you're adding, right, like see, so you're adding, you would add. If you're subtracting, you would subtract, okay? And then so that's the same, right? Then it's the opposite, meaning if you add it here, you're going to subtract here. If you subtract here, you're going to add here. So the second one is going to be the opposite sign, right? And then the last one, AP, is always going to be positive. So that was just going to be positive 9. 
So we'll do some more sum and difference of two cubes. I've got examples of all these different types of factoring. I'll put links in the description below if you want to uh, focus in on a particular type. But this is just uh, designed to go through all the different types at once uh, in a random order to help you practice your factoring skills. So let's go to number five. We've got 6x squared plus 7x minus 5. So first step, greatest common factor. Doesn't look like there's a greatest common factor. How many terms? Two, three, or four? It looks like three terms. Is the leading coefficient one? No. Okay, leading coefficient is not one. So we're going to use either the AC method, the box method, trial and error method, etc. Let's do uh, the box method. So what we're going to do is we're going to say a times c, okay, 6 times negative 5 is negative 30. What two numbers multiply to negative 30, but they have to add to 7? So what do you think that would be? Multiplies to negative 30, adds to 7. Well, it looks like that's going to be uh, 10 and uh, negative 3. So what we do when we do the box method is we, we draw a box like this. We put the first term in the first box. We put the uh, last term here in the last box. And then the 10 and the negative 3, I'm going to write this as 10x and negative 3x. That adds up to the middle term, which is 7x. Okay. Then what you do is you look at these rows, okay, horizontally, and you ask yourself, what can I factor out of both of these two terms, 6x squared and 10x? Well, we can factor out a 2x, and if I do that, I'm going to be left with 3x uh, plus 5, okay, because 5 times 2x is 10x. And what can I factor out of both of these? It looks like we can only factor out uh, a negative 1. And so you can see 3x times negative 1 is negative 3x. Negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. And now we've got it factored. It's just going to be 2x minus 1 times 3x plus 5. And that's your factored form. Let's go to number six now. Here we've got uh, four terms, okay? Is there a greatest common factor? No. So we're gonna check to see if it's factoring by grouping when there's four terms. So what we do is we group those first two terms together. We group those last two terms together. And just remember that these are all added. They're not multiplied yet. We're gonna factor out the greatest common factor, which is 3x squared. So that's gonna give us x minus one. Here we're gonna factor out the greatest common factor, which is a two and we're left with x minus one. Now notice how there's an x minus one in both these groups. If we factor out that x minus one from this group, we'd be left with three x squared. If we factor out the x minus one from this group, we'd be left with two. And then you can see if you were to distribute the x minus one back in, you would get back the original polynomial. Again, with factoring completely, you always wanna see if you can factor further, but in this case, this is as far as we can go. That's your final result there. Okay, so for number seven, what do you think for this one? Is there a greatest common factor? No. Is there uh, three terms, four terms, or two terms? It looks like there's three terms. The leading coefficient is not one. You can see it's a four, okay? So we could use the AC or box method or the trial and error method, but there's another technique, and you might recognize this. This is called a perfect square trinomial. And the way you would look at this is you would say, okay, this is a perfect square. 2c times 2c is 4c squared. This is a perfect square, 5 times 5 is 25. But what you want to check is, is 2c times 5 doubled 20c? And then that uh, is, 2c times 5 is 10c, doubled is 20c. So this is 2c minus 5, the quantity squared. You can use the box method. A lot of students just like to do that, just so there's less to memorize. But let's add this to our, um, our sheet over here. It can also be a perfect square trinomial. So if you have a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, or a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, you're going to factor it as a minus b, the quantity squared, or a plus b, the quantity squared. So that's a perfect square uh, trinomial. And again, the nice thing about factoring is you could write this 2c minus 5 twice and FOIL it out, and you'll get back the original. But again, just to refresh, what I did is I took the square root of this first term, and I got 2c. Okay, so that's like my a value. I took the square root of the last term, 25, that's my b value. And then I said is a times b times 2, see, 2ab, does that match the middle term? And it did, so that's how I knew it was a perfect square trinomial. Now, if this was plus 20c, I would make this plus 5. Okay, let's go to number 8. y cubed plus 125. Greatest common factor? Doesn't look like it. How many terms? It looks like there's two terms. Is it a sum of two uh, cubes, difference of two cubes, or difference of two squares? Or it could be neither, right? Sometimes, you know, these are not factorable at all, and then you would just say, uh, you know, relatively prime. 
meaning you can't factor it. And so then over here, it looks like what we have is this is a perfect cube because y times y times y. This is a perfect cube, five times five times five. So it looks like we have a sum of two cubes. In this problem, uh, our a value is y, our b value is five, and we're gonna use our sum of two cubes formula. So this is gonna be y plus five, see a plus b, a squared uh, minus ab, plus b squared, which is five squared, which is 25, and you've got it. Leave a comment below in the comments to let me know and let others know if you're able to complete these 100 factoring problems and also uh, how many you were able to get right. Uh, so let's go to number nine, 3x squared minus 10x minus eight. So how would you factor that one? Well, let's see, there's three terms. There's not a greatest common factor. We could do the box method or the AC method or trial and error method. Uh, you can see the leading coefficients is not one. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do the AC method. We're gonna say A times C, three times negative eight is negative 24. What well, multiplies to negative 24, but it adds to the middle coefficient, negative 10. Well, that's gonna be negative 12X and positive 2X. So what I did is I split the middle term and then we just bring down the last term and the first term. Now you can see we have one, two, three, four terms. We can do our factoring by grouping. So this is called splitting the middle term and factoring by grouping. So I'm grouping the first two, I'm grouping the last two, and these are added together. We have to factor out the greatest common factor. That's gonna be three X. Here we can factor out the greatest common factor. That's gonna be two. And you can see we have an X minus four in common. So if we factor out that X minus four, we're gonna be left with three X plus two. And you've got it. Now you always wanna to check to see if you can factor further. In this case, we can't. So let's go to number 10. So number 10, we've got four terms. We don't have a greatest common factor. So how do you think you could factor that one? Well, when four terms, we usually think factoring by grouping. So I'm gonna group the first two, group the last two, and realize that those are added together. Factor out the greatest common factor, which in this case is Y squared. So we're left with five Y minus one. Here the greatest common factor is just gonna be uh, two. And so you can see we're left with five Y minus one. And again, you can check if you distribute back in, that's 10 Y minus two, we get back that original polynomial there. And now we have a five Y minus one in common. If we factor that five Y minus one out of this group, we're left with Y squared. If we factor out the five Y minus one out of this group, we're left with positive two. And then you always wanna to check to see if you can factor further. In this case, we can't, so we've got it uh, completely factored. For number 11, doesn't look like there's a greatest common factor. Doesn't look like, um, let's see, it looks like we have two terms. So, we, and we can see that this is a minus. So let's see, is it a difference of two squares? Well, let's see, this is actually a perfect square, that's six Y. And this is a perfect square, that's seven Z. And this is adding, this one's gonna be plus, this one's gonna be minus, or vice versa. It doesn't really matter because uh, this is, multiplication is commutative. So we factor it as a sum and difference pattern because this was a difference of two squares. Can we factor further? No, so that looks like that's gonna be our final result. Okay, for number 12, what do you think for this one? Is there a greatest common factor? Yes, it looks like there is. It looks like we can factor out a five. So we could divide these both by five. Looks like this is three A's, that's two A's. So the most they have in common is two A's or A squared. One B, two B's, looks like the most number of B's they have in common is one B. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna factor out that greatest common factor of five A squared B. If we divide this group by five A squared B, we're gonna be just left with A. If we divide this group by five A squared B, we're gonna be left with two B. And again, you can check your work. If you distribute back in, you get back the original polynomial. Here we can't factor further, so that's our final result. Okay, for number 13, what do you think for this one? Y squared minus eight Y plus 15. There's not a greatest common factor, right? Looks like there's three terms. Leading coefficient is one. Okay, when the leading coefficient is one, those ones are usually pretty easy, right? All you have to do is ask yourself, what two numbers multiply to 15, but they have to add to negative eight? Well, that's gonna be negative five and negative three, because negative five times negative three is positive 15, negative five y and negative three y is the middle one, negative eight y. Can we factor further? No, so that's uh, fully factored. Okay, for number 14, what do you think for this one? Well, let's see, we've got three terms. There's not a greatest common factor. The leading coefficient is not one, so that's gonna be in this form right here. We could do the AC method, box method, trial and error, 
But what jumps out at me here is that this is a perfect square, 3y times 3y. This is a perfect square, 1 times 1. And if I take 3y times 1, that's 3y, double that's 6y, so it's fitting this a squared 2ab, b squared perfect uh, square trinomial pattern. So we can factor this as 3y plus 1, the quantity squared. Now if this was minus 6y, this would be minus 1. So you see how I did that, recognizing the first one's a perfect square, the last one's a perfect square, and then you multiply them together and double it. If it matches that middle term, you know, then you know you've got a perfect square trinomial on your hands. Now, in order for this to be a perfect square, this last one it has to be positive, right? If this is negative one, that's not a perfect square. Um, so that's something to pay attention to. So for number 15, what do you think for this one? We've got a trinomial, leading coefficient's not one. Looks like we're in the same boat as this last problem, right? Uh, but let's see, it looks like, is this a perfect square? Yes, because that's 8e. Is this a perfect square? Yes, because that's 7. Is 8e times 7 doubled 112e? Well, yeah, that's 56 doubled as 112. And you see this is minus 112, so this is 8e minus 7, the quantity squared. And if, again, if you want to check your work, take 8e minus 7 times another 8e minus 7 and multiply it out, and you'll see that you get back the original polynomial. For number 16, what do you think for this one? e cubed minus 1. Well, there's not a greatest common factor. There's just two terms, right? Is it a difference of two squares or is it a difference of two cubes? Well, it looks like it's a difference of two cubes because 1 cubed is 1, e cubed is e cubed. So you can see that in our formula here, a is going to be e and b is going to be 1. So this is your a value, this is your b value. All you have to do now is substitute in uh, using that same opposite, always positive for the signs. So this is going to be e minus 1, so that's the same. See, if we subtract, we subtract. Then it's e squared, the opposite, right, sine. So you subtract, you add. That's going to be a times b, which is going to be e, plus b squared, which is going to be a, a 1 squared, which is 1. So same opposite, always positive, and you've got it. Now you want to check to see if you can factor further. In this case, we can't. So that's as far as you can go, and you've got it fully factored. Okay, if you're rolling your eyes and you're like, Mario, these are too easy, go to the last 20 or 25 or 30 problems in this video and try those. Those might be a little bit more challenging for you, but we're going through the different types and it should be getting a little bit more difficult as we go through. So this one, we've got three terms. Leading coefficient is not one. There's not a greatest common factor. Let's do the AC method. Five times negative two is negative 10. So what two numbers multiply to negative 10, but add to that middle coefficient, positive nine. Well, you can see that's going to be uh, 10x and negative 1x, add up to the 9x, and, and let's see, this bring down the negative 2 and bring down the 5x squared. And now what we're going to do is we're going to factor by grouping. So we want to make sure you capture that sign. These are actually going to be added together. Factor out the greatest common factor, that's 5x. Factor out the negative 1, that's the greatest common factor. Notice we have an x plus 2 in common. If we factor that out, we're going to be left with 5x minus 1 and you've got it. Let's look at number 18. So this one, you've got two terms. There's not a greatest common factor. Uh, it looks like it's a difference of two squares because y times y is y squared. Nine times nine is 81. One's adding, one's subtracting. You've got your sum and difference pattern and you factored it. Number 19, what do you think for this one? Is there a greatest common factor? No, it looks like we've got four terms. So we're thinking factoring by grouping again, right? So group, group, and these are added together. Factor out the greatest common factor, which is 4a squared. So that gives you a plus 3. Factor out the greatest common factor here, which is negative 3. That gives you a plus 3. We have an a plus 3 in common. If we factor that out, we're going to be left with 4a squared minus 3. Now you want to look, if this was 4a squared minus 9, for example, then that would be a difference of two squares. We would factor it further. But in this case, it's not a difference of two squares. We can't factor it further. That's as far as we can go. For number 20, you can see we've got a trinomial. There's not a greatest common factor. The leading coefficient is 1. These ones generally are pretty easy for students. You just say to yourself, what two numbers multiply to positive 24, but they have to add to the middle coefficient 10, and that's just going to be positive 6 and positive 4. You can check your work by foiling. 6c and 4c gives you the 10c, and you know, you're going to see that you get back the original one. Number 21, we've got a trinomial. This one, it looks like we can factor out a greatest common factor of 4, they're all divisible by 4, right? And it looks like they all have at least one c in common. So if we divide out a 4c out of all three of these, you can see we're going to have 4c squared 
plus 10c plus 3. Now you want to see if you can factor it further. So if we use that AC method, 4 times 3, what multiplies to 12 but adds to 10? There really isn't anything. So in this case, this is as far as we can go. It was just a greatest common factor type of factoring problem. For 22, we've got a binomial. It does look like we have a greatest common factor here. We could divide both of these by 7y squared. And if we factor out that 7y squared, you can see here this is going to reduce to 3. This is going to reduce to y. Again, if you distribute that 7y squared back in, you're going to get back the original polynomial. For 23, we've got a trinomial. Leading coefficients 1. These ones are usually pretty easy. There's not a greatest common factor. So we just have to ask ourselves, you know, Mario, what two numbers multiply to negative 56 but add to 1? That's the, that's the question, right? So that'd be positive 8 and negative 7. 8d, negative 7d gives you the 1d, and you've got it. 24, you can see we have a trinomial, not a greatest common factor, but the leading coefficient is not 1. So it's going to be like this last one here. Let's do the box method on this one. So a times c, what multiplies to negative 56? So two numbers that multiply to negative 56. But those same two numbers have to add to the middle coefficient, which you can see is a positive 1. So that looks like it's going to be positive 8 and negative 7, right? So what we can do now, if we do our box method, is draw a box. This is going to be 14x squared. This is going to be negative 4, OK? And then here, we're going to put in 8x and negative 7x. Greatest common factor for this row is going to be 2x. So that's going to give us 7x plus 4. Greatest common factor for this row is going to be negative 1. And you can double check. 7x times negative 1 is negative 7x. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So our fully factored form here is going to be 2x minus 1 times 7x plus 4. And you've got it. OK, number 25, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. There's not a greatest common factor. So let's try our factoring by grouping. So we want to group the first two terms. Group the last two terms. These aren't multiplied together. They're actually added together. We factor out the greatest common factor, which in this case is d squared. Here, the greatest common factor is a negative 5. You can see we have a 7d plus 2 in common. If we factor out that 7d plus 2, we're going to be left with d squared minus 5. Now, if this had been d squared minus 4, that's a difference of two squares, and we could factor it further. But in this case, that's as far as we can go. For 26, we've got 64 minus f cubed. You can see there's not a greatest common factor. It looks like it's a difference of two, cube, uh, two cubes. 64 is 4 cubed, and of course, this is f cubed. So in our formula for the difference of two cubes, uh, a is going to be 4 and b is going to be uh, f. So if we factor, this is going to be same. I mean, if we subtract, we subtract. a squared is 4 squared, which is 16. The opposite, that's 4 times f, which is 4f plus b squared. b is f, so this is going to be f squared. And that's as far as we can factor it. For 27, we've got two terms. It looks like a difference of two squares. So we're going to factor it using that sum and difference pattern, a plus 1, a minus 1, or you could do a minus 1, a plus 1. And you've got it. Number 28, we've got a trinomial. This one's pretty easy because the leading coefficient's 1. We just have to factor it uh, asking ourselves what two numbers multiply to 48 but add to 19. And that's going to be 16 and 3, and you've got it. For 29, it looks like we've got a greatest common factor of 3x. So let's factor out that 3x. This is going to be x squared plus 4x plus 6. Is there something that multiplies to 6, uh, two numbers that multiply to 6 but add to 4? No, so that's as far as we can go with that one. Just factor out the greatest common factor. For number 30, we have a sum of two cubes, because 216 is actually like 6 cubed, 6 times 6 times 6. g cubed is g times g times g. So here we have a sum of two cubes. We're going to use this SOAP uh, formula here, the sum of two cubes formula. So g plus 6, g squared minus 6g plus 6 squared, which is 36. So same, opposite, always positive. That's our SOAP acronym to remember the signs. For 31, we've got a trinomial. There's no greatest common factor. Leading coefficient's not 1. OK, so we're, we can either uh, do the box method, the AC method. Let's do the AC method. What multiplies to negative 60 but adds to this middle coefficient, which is uh, negative 7? Well, it looks like that's going to be 12, negative 12x and positive 5x. So negative 12 times 5 is negative 60. Negative 12 plus 5 is negative 7. So this is just called like splitting the middle term. 
bring down the last term, bring down the first term. Now we've got four terms, we can do our factoring by grouping. So we group the first two, group the last two, realize these are added together, and then factor out that greatest common factor. Uh, this is gonna be x minus three. Here we can factor out the greatest common factor, which is five. That's x minus three. We've got an x minus three in common. We can factor the x minus three out, and we're left with four x plus five. Okay, for 32, we've got a trinomial. There's not a greatest common factor. The leading coefficient's not one. We could use the box method or the AC method, but what jumps out at me here is that this first term is a perfect square. See, 4m times 4m. This last term is a perfect square, three times three. And then if we do 4m times three is 12m doubled is 24m. So it's fitting this perfect square trinomial pattern. So this is 4m plus three squared, uh, not cubed, squared. And if this was a minus 24m, then this would be a minus three. So this is a uh, binomial squared. So remember, there's a worksheet, a free worksheet in the uh, description below if you wanna get that and print it out to practice. Uh, but let's continue on. So 33, what you wanna look for is the greatest common factor, which there isn't one. Notice the leading coefficient is not one. So what I like to do when the leading coefficient is not one is check to see if this is a perfect square, which it is, it's 10L. Check to see if the last term is a perfect square, which it is, it's 9m. Then you just have to see is 10l times 9m doubled 180lm? Well it is, this is 90lm doubled is 180lm. Because this is minus, this is gonna be minus, and it's the quantity squared. If this is plus, this would be plus. So it's that perfect square trinomial pattern over here that we talked about earlier. Let's look at number 34, we've got four terms. There's not a greatest common factor. We're gonna factor by grouping. Factor out the greatest common factor, which is gonna be x cubed. Okay, so that's gonna be x minus four. Factor out the greatest common uh, factor here. Greatest common factor is two. That's x minus four. We have an x minus four in common. If we factor that out, we're left with x cubed plus two. Now, if this was x cubed plus one, that'd be a sum of two cubes. We could factor that further, but in this case, that's as far as we can go. For 35, it looks like we have a difference of two squares. These are probably getting pretty easy for you now. That's gonna be d plus 11, d minus 11, because 11 squared is 121. This one's also a difference of two squares. This is four y squared plus one and four y squared minus one, right? Because uh, four y squared times four y squared, that's uh, 16 y to the fourth. But this is, uh, you can factor further, this is actually gonna be two y plus one and two y minus one. That's a difference of two squares. This is um, a sum of two squares, which we really can't factor over the set of uh, real numbers. You could do it over the set of imaginary numbers or complex numbers. So we're just gonna leave that uh, in its current form and you've got it. For number 37, you always wanna look for that greatest common factor. It looks like we can factor out a 2p. So that's gonna be p cubed minus eight. This is a difference of two cubes because remember eight is two times two times two and this is p cubed. So in this case, in our formula, A is gonna be P and B is gonna be two. So this is gonna be P minus two, P squared plus two P plus two squared, which is four, and that's fully factored. So notice how we're like having to factor a little bit more now that we're getting further on in this uh, worksheet here. Uh, first we did the greatest common factor, then we had this difference of two cubes. You could even have something after that, and you might have to factor it three, four times. For number 38, it doesn't look like there's a greatest common factor. We can group it and do the factoring by grouping. So if we factor out an x squared, factor out a negative one, we can see we have an x plus two in common. If we factor that out of this group, we're left with x squared. If we factor out of this group, we're left with negative one. This is a difference of two squares. So we can factor it as x plus one, x minus one, and then just bring down the x plus two. So see how it's getting a little bit more multi-step now? For number 39, you wanna look for the greatest common factor. It looks like we can divide all these by two. Looks like they all have at least one x. Looks like they all have at most one y. So we're gonna divide out a two x y out of all these terms. That's gonna be our greatest common factor. And here we're gonna be left with y. Here we're gonna be left with two x. And here we're gonna be left with four x y. And you've got it and this can't be factored further, so that's as far as we can go. For number 40, uh, the leading coefficient is one. It's a trinomial, there's not a greatest common factor. These ones, like we said, are getting uh, probably pretty easy for you. What multiplies to negative 36, but adds to negative five? That's gonna be negative nine and positive four, and it's fully factored.
Okay, number 41, we've got 6c squared minus cd minus 2d squared. It's a trinomial, the leading coefficient's not one. Let's do the AC method. Let's just look at the coefficients. Six times negative two, what multiplies to negative 12, but adds to that middle coefficient, negative one? Well, that's gonna be negative four and positive three. So negative four is cd plus positive three cd is the negative one cd. Let's bring down the negative 2d squared and the 6c squared, and let's factor by grouping. So if we factor out the greatest common factor here, which is 2c, we're left with 3c minus 4d, uh, actually 3c minus 2d. And here if we factor out the greatest common factor out of these last two terms, which would be uh, just d, we have 3c minus 2d. Notice how we have a 3c minus 2d in common. We can factor out that 3c minus 2d and we're left with 2c plus 1d, and that's fully factored. Okay, that was a little bit tougher one because we had two variables, c and d. Okay, number 42, we've got a trinomial. It looks like you can factor out a three out of all these terms. So that's gonna be 4x squared plus 12x plus nine. Notice that this is a perfect square, that's 2x times 2x. This is a perfect square, that's three times three. 2x times three is 6x doubled is 12x. So that's a perfect square trinomial pattern, so a binomial squared, and we bring down that greatest common factor, the three, and that's a fully factored. Number 43, it looks like we can factor out a seven out of both of these and a one D out of both of these. So if we factor out the seven D, we're gonna be left with seven uh, C squared minus, uh, let's see, what would this be? This would be three D cubed. We can't factor this any further, so that's as far as we can go. And it looks like this is actually C cubed, C cubed, because we just factored out a D. So the D's canceled. We had uh, C cubed and minus three D cubed. Yeah, there you go. Okay, for number 44, uh, this one's pretty easy. You can see the leading coefficient is one. It's a trinomial, there's not a greatest common factor. What multiplies to negative three, but adds to positive two, that's gonna be three and negative one. So L plus three times L minus one. For 45, we have a trinomial. The leading coefficient is not one. It looks like we can factor out a three here, so let's do that. That's always gonna make it easier if the numbers are smaller, right? Multiply the A and the C together. What multiplies to negative six, but adds to negative one? Well, that's gonna be negative three and positive two. And if we bring down the last term and bring down the first term, now what we can do is factor by grouping, okay? And it looks like the greatest common factor here is 3x, that's 2x minus one. Here we can only factor out like a one, so that's 2x minus one. So you can see this is gonna be 2x minus one times 3x plus one. And if we bring that greatest common factor out from the initial step, the three, that's gonna be fully factored. If you wanna check your work, you can multiply all this out and double check. For 46, uh, you can factor out a greatest common factor of 3y squared, so that's gonna give us 27y cubed minus one. This is a difference of two cubes because 27y cubed, that's like three y cubed. And one cubed, of course, is a uh, perfect cubed. And so it's a difference of two cubes. This is like our a value, this is like our b value in our difference of two cubes uh, formula. So this is three y squared, three y minus one, three y the quantity squared, which is nine y squared, plus three y plus negative, uh, sorry, plus one squared, which is one. So that's gonna be fully factored. So start with the greatest common factor. That makes everything a little bit smaller. Then see if you can factor it further from there and keep on going. So for 47, it looks like we can factor out a five. So that's gonna be 25y squared minus nine. This is a difference of two squares. So we can factor it as five y plus three and five y minus three. And then we just have to bring down that five and that's fully factored. And then for 48, looks like we can factor out a 5y out of all of these terms. So that's gonna be 5y, 16 minus 8y plus y squared. And then if you notice that this is a perfect square, four times four, this is a perfect square, because y times y, and let's see, four times y is four y doubled is eight y, so this is four minus y squared, that's a perfect square trinomial. Bring down that greatest common factor, five y, and you've got it fully factored. Okay, number 49, we've got 36y squared minus 120xy plus 100x squared. Remember, the first step is always that greatest common factor. It looks like we can divide out a four, 
So let's do that first. We've got 9y squared minus 30xy plus 25x squared. Now we've got a trinomial. The leading coefficient's not one, but notice how this is a perfect square. This is also a perfect square. We have a perfect square trinomial on our hands, possibly. Let's double check. Square root of 9y squared is 3y. Square root of 25x squared is 5x. Is 3y times 5x doubled 30xy? Yes, because this is 15xy doubled is 30xy. So this is gonna be 3y minus 5x, the quantity squared. We just have to bring down that four that we factored out initially, and we got it completely factored. Okay, number 50, we're halfway. 5x to the fourth minus 320x. First step, remember, is to factor out that greatest common factor, which in this case looks like 5x. So that's gonna be x cubed minus 64. But notice we have a binomial, and it's actually a difference of two cubes because 64 is four cubed, and of course, x cubed is a perfect cube. So we've got x minus four, x squared plus four x, plus four squared, which is 16 and we just bring down that 5x. So I'm just using this difference of two cubes formula, the same opposite, always positive. For 51, you can see we've got four terms here. We're thinking factoring by grouping, right? So here I'm gonna group these first two terms together, group the last two terms, and these are added uh, together. So if we factor out the greatest common factor, y cubed, we have y plus one. Here if we factor out the greatest common factor, which is eight, we have y plus one. Notice how we have a y plus one in common. We can then factor that y plus one out, and we're left with y cubed plus eight. Now, when you look at y cubed plus eight, you can see this is actually what? It's a sum of two cubes, because eight is two cubed. So we can really factor this further into y plus two, y squared minus 2y plus 2 squared, which is 4. So our final factored form, I'm just going to cross out the y cubed plus 8. It equals all of this times the y plus 1, and that's fully factored. Okay, now 52, it looks like we've got four terms, but there's a greatest common factor of 2a. So let's factor out that 2a. That's going to give us a cubed plus 3a squared, 3a squared uh, minus minus 4a uh, minus uh, 12. Okay, now we have four terms. We're thinking factoring by grouping. So if I take out the greatest common factor here, we're gonna have a squared, which gives us a plus three. If I take out the greatest common factor out of these two, that's gonna be negative four, which gives us a plus three. And see how you have that a plus three in common? You can factor that out. When we factor that out, that's gonna leave us with a squared minus four but that's a difference of two squares, so we can factor it as a plus two, a minus two. And remember, don't forget about that greatest common factor, the two a that we factored out initially. You wanna bring that down in front. Okay, number 53, we've got a trinomial. It looks like there's a greatest common factor of a two here, so let's factor that out first. Four y squared plus seven y minus two. Leading coefficient's not one. This is a perfect square, but two is not a perfect square, so we don't have a perfect square trinomial on our hands. But we can do our AC method. We could say four times negative two is negative eight. So what multiplies to negative eight, but adds to positive seven? Well, that's gonna be eight y, uh, I'm sorry, just gonna be eight and negative one, but we can split this up into eight y and negative one y, which adds up to the seven y. So I'm just splitting the middle term and factoring by grouping now. So if we factor out the uh, greatest common factor out of these two and the greatest common factor out of these two, we get, let's see, 4y, that's uh, y plus 2. And if we factor out a negative 1, we get y plus 2. And so now, let's see, I'm running out of space. So we've got uh, y plus 2 in common. If we factor that out, we're going to have y plus 2, 4y minus 1. And we just have to put that 2 in front. That was our initial greatest common factor. So you can see those are getting to be a little bit more multi-step. Uh, let's look at number 54. So 54, it looks like we have a greatest common factor of what? Looks like uh, four. So if we factor out a four, we get mn squared minus six uh, m plus five n cubed. Now, uh, actually this would be two right here because four times two is eight mn squared, okay? And you can always double check by distributing back in. When I look at this here, this can't be factored any further. So that's as far as we can go. In this case, it was just the greatest common factor of four that we could pull out. So for 55, it looks like we can factor out a greatest common factor. Again, it looks like it's actually gonna be 24a. So if we divide these both by 24a, 
we get 9a squared minus 1. This is a difference of two squares. We can factor that as 3a plus 1 and 3a minus 1, and we just have to bring down that 24a. Okay, for 56, we've got a trinomial. There's not a greatest common factor. The leading coefficient's 1, so these tend to be a little bit easier. We just have to say what multiplies to positive 56 but adds to negative 18, that's going to be negative 14 and negative 4. You can double check by foiling that out. You'll get back the original polynomial. Okay, number 57, we have e squared plus 12e minus 45. This one's pretty straightforward. It's a trinomial, leading coefficients 1. All we have to do is say what two numbers multiply to negative 45 but add to 12. And you can see that that's going to be... Uh, let's see, 15 and negative 3. For number 58, we've got a trinomial, but it looks like we have a greatest common factor of, let's see, it looks like they all have an r in common, at least one r in common. It looks like they all have at least one s in common. So what we can do is we can divide all these terms by rs, or factor out the rs, and you can see we're going to be left with 4r squared plus 2s plus 3 rs, and we really can't factor that any further, so you got it. Uh, number 59, it looks like we have a trinomial. It looks like we have a greatest common factor of 2a, so if you factor that out, we have 3a squared minus 5a uh, minus 12, but what two numbers multiply to negative 36 and add to negative 5, that's going to be negative 9 and positive 4. So we can split that middle term into negative 9a and positive 4a. You can do the box method on this one uh, if you prefer. And so now all we have to do is we have four terms, so let's see if we can do the factoring by grouping. Let's factor out a 3a out of these first two terms. That's going to give us a minus 3. Let's factor out a 4 out of these last two terms. Notice how we have an a minus 3 in common. We can factor that a minus 3 out, and that's going to leave us with 3a plus 4. But remember that 2a we factored out initially, that goes out in front of the two factors there. For number 60, it looks like we have a greatest common factor of 10c cubed. So if we factor that out, we're going to be left with c cubed plus 1,000. 1,000 is actually 10 cubed, so we have a sum of 2 cubes. So if we factor this, we're going to get c plus 10, c squared minus 10c plus 10 squared, which is 100, and then we just bring down that greatest common factor. Let's look, go to number 61. Here it looks like the only thing we can do is factor out an x. That's our greatest common factor, so that's 21x squared plus 11x minus 2. Uh, trinomial, leading coefficient's not 1. So we can do our AC method, okay, and we can say what multiplies to 21 times negative 2, which is negative 42, but has to add to that middle term, which is positive 11. So that's going to be 14 and negative 3. So I'm going to split that middle term into 14x and negative 3x, bring down the first and last terms. And now what we're going to do is we're going to factor by grouping since we have four terms. If I factor out a greatest common factor and factor out a negative 1 out of the last two terms, See how we have a 3x plus 2 in common? We can factor that out, and we're going to be left with 7x minus 1. But don't forget about the x we factored out initially. So you can see there's a lot of steps you know, as you go on, but it starts with the greatest common factor, and then you analyze how many terms, 2, 3, or 4 terms. For 62, what do you think for this one? Uh, 1 minus 343m cubed. We're getting into some larger numbers also, so it really helps to know your uh, perfect squares and perfect cubes. 343 is actually 7 cubed, so this is actually going to be a difference of 2 cubes. It's going to be 1 minus 7m and 1 plus 7m plus 7m, the quantity squared, which is 49m squared. Same opposite, always positive, and we can't factor it any further from there. For 63, we've got four terms. This is going to be our typical uh, factoring by grouping. If we factor out the greatest common factor, here we can only factor out a 1. But notice how we have a c squared minus 4 in common. We can factor out that c squared minus 4. We're left with c cubed plus 1. But notice we have a difference of two squares and a sum of two cubes. So we have some more factoring we need to do here. This is going to factor out to c plus 2 and c minus 2. This one, uh, sum of two cubes, is going to factor to c plus 1, c squared minus c plus 1 squared, which is just 1. So that one was kind of involved a lot of different types of factoring. For 64, it looks like we have a difference of 
two squares, okay? Because if you think about this, this is actually like 8c cubed times 8c cubed, right? And then 729 is actually um, a perfect square. That's 27 times 27. But remember, when you factor a difference of two squares, it's a sum and difference pattern, a plus b, a minus b, right? But now look what we have. This is actually a perfect cube. It's 2c, the quantity cubed, 27 is three cubed. Same thing here, this is a perfect cube minus a perfect cube. So we have a sum of two cubes and a difference of two cubes. Back to our SOAP formula, this is gonna factor to uh, 2c plus three times 2c uh, the quantity squared, which is 4c squared, uh, minus 6c plus nine, and then this is gonna factor to 2c minus three, 2c the quantity squared, which is 4c squared, uh, plus 6c plus three squared, which is nine. So this one was actually a combination of a sum of two cubes and a difference of two cubes, as well as a difference of two squares initially. Okay, number 65, it looks like we can factor out a greatest common factor here. It looks like they're, both terms are divisible by five. It looks like they both have two x's in common, x squared. And it looks like they both have two y's in common, like y squared. So if we divide out that five x squared y squared as the greatest common factor, we're gonna be left with y squared minus four x. And we can't factor this any further. It's not a difference of two squares. So it looks like we just the greatest common factor on that one. For number 66, we've got a trinomial. The leading coefficient's one. So these are the ones that we've been talking about as being pretty easy. You just have to say what multiplies to 64, but adds to negative 20. That's gonna be, uh, let's see, uh, negative 16 and negative four, and you got it. Uh, see, for this one, we've got a difference of two squares. So this is gonna be one plus three y and one minus three y. So that one was pretty straightforward. Number 68, it looks like, see how these all end in zero? That means we can factor out a 10. So that's gonna be 4d squared plus 28d plus 49. But it looks like this uh, is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. Let's see if we have a perfect square a trinomial here. We've got 2d times 7, which is 14d doubled as 28d. So this is a perfect square, and we just bring down that greatest common factor. Okay, for number 69, let's see, we've got four terms. So we're thinking factoring by grouping, right? So group the first two, group the last two, those are added together. Factor out the GCF out of both groups. Looks like we have an e minus 2 in common that we can factor out. So e minus 2, and we're left with e cubed plus two, this is not a sum of two cubes, we can't take that any further, so we're gonna leave it just like that. Number 70, it looks like there's not a greatest common factor. This starts with a negative, which is a little bit messy, so why don't we factor out that negative first? So that's gonna flip the signs. Now, notice how we have a uh, perfect square here, right? So this is actually 3a times 3a. This is a perfect square, 5b times 5b. 3a times 5b is 15ab, doubled is 30ab, so it looks like we have a perfect square trinomial, and we just bring down that greatest common factor we factored out initially, that negative. Number 71, again, this is an easy one because the leading coefficient is one, it's a trinomial. We just have to figure out what multiplies to 24, but adds to negative 10. That's gonna be negative six and negative four. Number 72, we've got a trinomial. Leading coefficient is not one. There's not a greatest common factor. Let's do the box method on this one. So what multiplies to negative 30 but adds to negative 13? Okay, so let's see, what would that be? Multiplies to negative 30 but adds to negative 13. So that would be negative 15 and positive two, right? So negative 15 and positive two, and I'm just gonna add the x in there, see how these add up to the negative 13 x. Put the negative three here and the 10x squared here. Now all we have to do is factor out the greatest common factor out of this row, which is two x. That leaves us with five x plus one. And here factor out the greatest common factor out of this row, which is negative three. Double check, that gives us negative 15 x, that gives us negative three. So our two factors are gonna be five x plus one, that's this group, and two x minus three. And if you FOIL that out, you're gonna get back to the original polynomial. Okay, number 73. Now this one's kind of an interesting one. Things are getting a little crazy now here. We've actually got six terms, but if you look at it closely, what you'll notice is 
we could factor this, these first three terms, we could also factor these last three terms. So let's start there. Uh, here you can see that this is actually a perfect square trinomial. This is gonna be x minus one squared. Here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor out a negative one out of all three of these terms. So that's gonna be y squared plus six y plus nine. Notice this is also a perfect square trinomial. That's y plus three squared. Now notice what we have, we have a difference of two squares. Okay, so this is actually gonna be x minus one, okay, plus y plus three and x minus one minus y plus three. So you could leave it like that, or we could simplify it down a little bit more. Let's see if we can simplify it just a little bit more. This is gonna be x plus y plus two. This is gonna be x minus y minus four. And that's as far as we can go on that one. So here we had to kind of do it in two groups first. Okay, number 74, we've got x to the sixth minus seven x cubed minus eight. Now, one thing I want to point out to you here is, see how this leading, I'm sorry, see how this middle term, see the x cubed, see how that power is half of that leading term's power? This is what's called in quadratic form. Okay, so you would know how to factor this if this was x squared minus seven x minus eight, right? What would you say? You would say, well, this is like x, what multiplies to negative eight but adds to negative seven, you would say that's minus eight and positive one. But the only thing we're gonna do now is make these cubed Okay, because x cubed times x cubed gives us x to the sixth, and negative eight x cubed and positive one x cubed adds up to the negative seven x cubed. So it's just like factoring quadratics, but we're gonna take it one step further because we have a sum of two cubes and a difference of two cubes, eight is two cubed. So let's factor this a little bit more, x minus two, uh, x squared plus two x plus two squared, which is four, and here we have x plus one times x squared minus whoops, x squared minus x plus one squared, which is one. So it's all of that multiplied together. Okay, let's go to number 75. This one's an easy one, so just kind of break up some of the tough ones here to give us a little, uh, little rest here. So what multiplies to negative 56 adds up to negative one, that's gonna be negative eight and positive seven. For number 76, uh, we've got some larger numbers here. We could do the AC method, 12 times negative 14, that's a pretty big number, um, and we'd have to figure out what adds to negative 13. Two numbers that multiply to, um, what do we say, negative 168, but adds to negative 13. So what I'm gonna do here on this one is I'm actually gonna just do a little bit of a trial and error method. So what two numbers multiply to 12y squared? That could either be 4y and 3y, 6y and 2y, 12y and 1y. Let's start with 4y and 3y. Then we're gonna jump to the last terms. What multiplies to negative 14, but we want the inner product and the outer product to add up to negative 13y. So let's see, I'm thinking uh, seven and two. This is gonna give us eight y, 21 y. We want this to be negative 21 y and positive eight y. That adds up to the negative 13 y and we've got it. So I use the trial and error method on that one. Uh, you could do the AC method, uh, the box method, et cetera. Let's do number 77. This one, we've got a difference of two squares. Uh, this is actually a perfect square. It's 16 x to the eighth. Uh, times 16x to the eighth uh, plus one minus one, right? So it's a difference of two squares. But see the 16 eighth uh, minus one, this is actually a uh, difference of two squares. That's four x to the fourth plus one and four x to the fourth minus one. Okay, let's bring this down. And then uh, this one is also a difference of two squares. We can factor this into two x, oops, my writing's getting a little messy here. So two x squared plus one and two x squared minus one. And let's bring these two terms down, four x to the fourth plus one. We can't factor that, it's a sum of two uh, squares. Same thing with this one. You could factor it over the set of complex numbers. We're just working with real numbers right now. So that would be your fully factored form. Okay, for 78, this is a little bit easier. This is a perfect square and this is a perfect square. Let's see if we have a perfect square trinomial on our hands here. We've got four squared, which is 16, three eight, the quantity squared is 90 squared, four times three e is 12 e, doubled is 24 e. So this is just a perfect square, four minus three e, the quantity squared. Okay, fractions, so we're trying to take it up a notch as we get further along in this uh, worksheet. We wanna factor out that fraction, okay, to make this a little bit easier. Uh, looking at the denominators, three and 27, 27's our least common multiple, so let's factor out a 1 27th. Okay, so when you, uh, factor out 127th, on the inside here, it's like multiplying by the reciprocal, 27 over one. 
27 over 1 times 1 third actually gives us 9, and 27 over 1 times 1 27 gives us uh, 1. You can double check if you distribute, you're going to get back the original. But notice now we have a difference of two squares. We can factor that as 3y plus 1, 3y minus 1, and we just have to bring down that 1 27th in front. Okay, and that's it. So uh, let's look at number 80. So at number 80, we've got a difference of two squares. x plus 1 is a squared, and 36 is 6 squared. So let's write this as x plus 1 plus 6, and x plus 1 minus 6. We can combine like terms here, so let's write this as x plus 7 and x minus 5. That's your final factored form. Okay, number 81, we've got quite a uh, expression here, but it looks like the first step, you know, is always the greatest common factor. Let's see what we can divide out of both of these groups. See how the groups are separated by minus? It looks like we can factor out a 3. It looks like this has 1x plus 1, this has 2x plus 1, so the, we can only factor out 1 out of each. And it looks like this has x minus 2, one of them. This has x minus 2, three of them. So we can only factor out one uh, that they have in common. Okay, so this is our greatest common factor. It's going to be 3x plus 1, x minus 2. And then when we do that, these are going to cancel, these are going to cancel. And one of these is going to cancel, leaving us with x minus 2 squared. This is going to be minus 3. This is going to be x plus 1. And these are going to cancel. Let's see if we can expand this because, you know, it might be that it can be factored further. Let's double check. So x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 3x minus 3. If we combine like terms, we get x squared minus 7x plus 1. That doesn't look like it can be factored. So that's as far as we can go with that one. And then we've got 3x plus 1, x minus 2. Okay, so that was a big one, but it basically was just a greatest common factor uh, problem. For number 82, this one's pretty easy. You can see that um, leading coefficient's 1. This is a perfect square, and this is a perfect square. So let's see if this is a perfect square trinomial. Uh, C times 10 is 10C, doubled is 20C. So yep, this is a perfect square trinomial. Number 83, we have a trinomial with a leading coefficient that's not 1. So we'll do our AC method. What multiplies to negative 42, but it adds to positive 19? That looks like that's going to be 21 and negative 2. So I'm splitting that middle term up into 21c and negative 2c. Now we can factor by grouping. So if I factor out a 7c, we get 2c plus 3. If I factor out a negative 1, we get 2c plus 3. If we factor out the 2c plus 3, we're left with 7c, and this is like a negative 1, so 7c minus 1. Okay, for number 84, we've got more fractions again. So let's see, so this one, 1 fourth, let's just factor out the 1 fourth. That's gonna be y squared minus 16. Because when you uh, divide out, like, a, uh, like see, so you're dividing out 1 fourth on the inside, it's like multiplying by the reciprocal, which is like multiplying by four. So that's how we get the 16 here. This is a difference of two squares, y plus four, y minus four, and then we can bring down the 1 fourth. Okay, let's go to number 85. This one is kind of interesting. It's a difference of two cubes. So we're gonna use our, our difference of two cubes formula, the SOAP. So it's gonna be x plus 2y minus one, right? And then it's gonna be x plus 2y squared. Um, let's see, this is gonna be plus x plus 2y times one, and then plus one squared, which is just one. Let's see if we can simplify this a little bit further. x plus 2y squared is x squared plus 4xy plus uh, 4y squared. 4y squared plus x plus 2y plus 1. Can we combine any like terms here? No, it doesn't look like it. So that's, we just expanded that out. And this is x plus 2y minus 1. Uh, that's as far as we can go on that one. Okay, for number 86, We've got four terms, so let's just do the factoring by grouping method. So we'll factor out a 2x squared. That leaves us with x plus 3. Here we can factor out a negative 1. That leaves us with x plus 3. See, so we have an x plus 3 in common. We can factor that x plus 3 out, and we're left with 2x squared minus 1. You know, we really can't factor this. This is not a perfect square, so it's not a difference of two squares. For 87, this one's pretty easy. We just have to say what two numbers multiply to 50 but add to 27, that's gonna be 25 and two. And for 88, 
This one, it looks like uh, this is a perfect square that's 3D times 3D. This is a perfect square that's 5 times 5. Is 3D times 5 doubled 30D? Yes, so this is a perfect square trinomial. Okay, number 89, we've got 16C squared minus the a plus 2, the quantity squared. So we have a difference of two squares. So this is actually going to be 4C plus a plus 2 and 4C minus a plus 2. Let's simplify it down a little bit more. 4C plus a plus 2. This is going to be 4C minus a minus 2 if you distribute that negative. So a difference of two squares. Number 90, uh, let's see, we've got a trinomial. There's not a greatest common factor. If we do our AC method, what multiplies to negative 72 but adds to negative 1, that's going to be negative 9 and positive 8. So I'm just going to split that middle term. And then what we're going to do is we're going to factor by grouping. So if I factor out, let's see, a negative uh, 3x, that's going to be x plus 3. And if I factor out a, a 4 here, that's going to be, um, let's see, did I make a mistake here? If we factor out a negative 3, this is going to be 2x. If we factor out a 4 here, this is going to be 2x plus 3. So we have a 2x plus 3 in common. If we factor the 2x plus 3 out, we have a negative 3x plus 4. Now, there's another way to do this problem in the sense that you could factor out like a negative 1 first and then factor it further. Um, but I just chose to just dive right in and uh, factor it like that. Number 91, we've got some more fractions. Okay, so how are we going to factor this one? Well, it looks like we've got 8, 2, and 2 for our denominators. The lowest common multiple of that would be 8. So let's factor out a 1 8th. Again, remember, if you factor out 1 8th, it's like multiplying inside the parentheses by the reciprocal, which is 8 over 1. So this is going to make this a squared minus 4a minus 12. And then we can factor this as a minus 6 and a plus 2. Uh, and then just bring down the 1 8th. Okay, so that was number 91. Let's go to number 92. This one's pretty straightforward because it's a trinomial leading coefficients 1. So we just have to say what multiplies to 23, but it adds to negative 24. That's going to be 24 and negative uh, 1. Actually, that's not true, is it, right? This would be... Uh, what am I doing here? Let's go back a step. Negative 23 and negative 1. There we go. Because a negative 23 times a negative 1 is positive 23. And negative 23 uh, x and negative 1 x is negative 24 x. So, okay, we're getting tired here near the end. Okay, number 93. 4 ninths c squared minus 4 thirds c plus 1. Uh, what can we do on this one? Well, let's see if we can factor out uh, 1 ninth. See, if we look at these fractions here, they all have a denominator uh, that has a lowest common multiple of, of 9. So if we factor it out a 1 ninth, we get 4c squared minus, uh, remember we factor out 1 ninth, it's like multiplying by the reciprocal in the parentheses, that's like multiplying by 9 over 1, so this would be 12c plus 9. Okay, so now notice that this is a perfect square, 2c times 2c. This is a perfect square, 3 times 3, 2c times 3 is 6c, doubled is 12c, so this is a perfect square trinomial, and then just bring down that greatest common factor, 1 ninth. For 94, it looks like we have a perfect square trinomial because this is actually 4w the quantity squared. 49 is 7 squared. 4w times 7 is 28w uh, doubled is negative 56w, uh, right? So 4w minus 7 the quantity squared for 94. Okay, we're on to the last six problems here. So number 95, we've got 10x to the fourth plus x squared minus 3. This is in what they call quadratic form because see how the x squared, this uh, 2 is half of 4. So you would factor it just like you would factor a normal quadratic trinomial uh, with a leading coefficient. So here what we're going to do is we're going to say what multiplies to negative 30 but it adds to positive 1. And you can see that's going to be uh, 6 and negative 5. So I'm splitting that middle term into 6x squared and negative 5x squared, bringing down the first and last terms. Now all we have to do is factor by grouping. So if I pull out the greatest common factor here, which is 2x squared, uh, we get, what, 5x squared plus 3. And here, if I factor out a negative 1 out of these two terms, we also get a 5x squared plus 3. So if we factor out that 5x squared plus 3, we're left with 2x squared minus 1, and it can't be factored any further. Number 96, this one's a little bit easier one, uh, because the leading coefficient's 1. We just have to say what multiplies to negative 42, but adds to 11. That's going to be, what, uh, positive 14 and negative 3. 
uh, for 97, this one you've got a leading coefficient of negative uh, 9. So let's factor out a negative 1. That's going to flip the signs. And then here what you might notice is that these are perfect squares. This is going to be 3f times 3f is 9f squared. 4 times 4 is 16. 3f times 4 is 12f doubled is 24f. And then that's a perfect square trinomial. Just bring down the negative 1 and you got it. Number 98, you can see we've got four terms. We're thinking of factoring by grouping. Here you can factor out a 5z cubed, which is going to give you 1 minus z. Here you can just factor out a negative 1, which gives you 3 minus z. Notice how 1 minus z and 3 minus z are not the same. That means this one actually cannot be factored, and we're going to say this is prime. And I think this is the only prime one, the one that couldn't be factored on this worksheet. Number 99. Uh, we've got a trinomial. The leading coefficient is uh, not 1. So let's do the AC method. What multiplies to negative 200 but adds to that middle term 17? Well, that looks like that's going to be 25 and negative 8. So I'm just going to split that middle term up into 25x and negative 8x. Bring down the first and last terms. Now we're back to factoring by grouping. So if I factor out a 5x, and if here if I factor out a negative 2, uh, negative 4 actually, negative 4, you want to go for the greatest common factor, so that's 2x plus 5. You can see we have a 2x plus 5 in common. If we factor out the 2x plus 5, we're left with 5x minus 4, and that's it for that one. And the final problem, we've got uh, a trinomial uh, leading coefficient, not 1. We're going to do our AC method. What multiplies to negative 24 but adds to negative 10? Uh, that is going to be negative 12z and positive 2z. And so now all we have to do is do our factoring by, by grouping. Let's factor out a 4z. Let's here, let's factor out a 1 out of those last two terms. You can see we have a 2z minus 3 in common. If we factor that out, we're left with 4z plus 1. And that's our final result. So I hope your skills with factoring really improved through this video. Let me know in the comments below how many you got right um, and what you learned from this video. Again, my channel is all about helping you to raise your grade, pass your class, and go on to pursue your dreams. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to helping you in my other videos. I'll talk to you soon.